Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Most Metal Monday Night with your host, Rob Zip, coming to you from uh, a fiery lair in Magic the Gathering world. Uh, I've got a special guest uh, from Planeswalker. We do interviews with metal bands from all over the world in every genre, and today we've got a power metal guitar hero here. Welcome to the show, Jason. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for being here. Um, so you're on the show uh, specifically. You've got a new project with uh, with your friend Sozos Michael. Did I say that right? You did. Okay. Yep. Uh, called Planeswalker. Yeah. Now, uh, most people may know that as a Magic the Gathering term, but uh, I, as I was saying before we went to air, I went to a deep dive on. Uh, planeswalker on hellion prime uh on your your personal your personal page so is his personal page and uh I, i'm gonna you know I, i'm a little add so i'm gonna let you tell the audience who you are and uh what brought you to this point here okay uh so you want me to kind of just talk about what led to planeswalker essentially sure. Sure. okay there, it's, i have an, i have an idea Right. You know, just from watching the videos, but I, I don't want to screw it up. You know, yeah, so no I'm worries. Put myself over here. Okay. Yeah, it's it's kind of a long but not long story. So um yeah, as as um as you mentioned, I'm Jason Ashcraft, um Helium Prime, uh Planeswalker and Dire Apparel. So those are the three groups that I do. Um, you know, and we'll get into all those later, but basically what led to kind of the birth of Planeswalker is Sozos became the singer of Helium Prime, actually, for our second album um, after our first singer, Heather Michelle, left. And, um, well, we had, there was Heather, and then for a very, very short time, for like six months, we had a singer, Kayla. Um, and then for the second album, Sozos came on board. So we released one single with uh, the singer Kayla from Oregon. So I want to, you know, give her that shout out. Um and then, but for the second debut, second debut, yes, for the second album, Sozos came on board. He lives in Cyprus, which is near Greece. And, you know, at the time we just signed to AFM Records out of Germany. So, you know, we thought, ah, it's all, it's all happening, right? So a singer in Europe, no big deal. Um, quickly found out being signed onto a label doesn't mean, you know, things are going to go the way you hope. And that's okay, right? We learned a lot. I learned a lot. But a big thing, uh, anyone who works in a band, works with international artists can tell you uh, visas are a nightmare. Mm. And we learned that firsthand, having to sort of cancel a lot of tours because we just couldn't get visas approved for Sozos to get over here. So Sozos and I kind of talked and we both agreed that, you know, maybe this is not going to work out um, because we just can't make it happen. The band wasn't really getting offers in Europe at the time, so... You know, we mutually agreed, like, all right, you know, maybe I'll just step down and we'll find someone in America that can feel the vocal shoes. But I love Sozos' voice. I love Sozos the person. So I always knew I wanted to do something again with him in the future. Fast forward to co-workers introducing me to Magic the Gathering, the, the game, the card game, get, getting me obsessed with that, just what I needed, an expensive hobby. Um so then I got, you know, I was like, you know, it'd, it'd be kind of fun to do a project based around the lore of Magic the Gathering, because that's what really hit me. I love playing the game, but the lore is really the character, you know, I'm very story driven with my games. My favorite video games are the ones with heavy story, you know, not so much first person shooters or anything like that. But if you got a good heavy story, chances are I'm going to love it. And that's with magic. It really kind of sucked me in. I love that it's a continuous, ongoing story. With each set of cards that comes out, the story is continued. So I kind of proposed the idea to Sozos, like, hey, man, I want to start this new band. I'd love for you to be the singer, but let's have it no pressure, low key, you know, uh, just something for fun for us to do. Um, I want to do it based on Magic the Gathering. Uh, he's never heard of it, but I had a feeling he'd be into the lore as I am, right? Because like me, he loves good story-driven mm -hmm. um, 
stories, <laughs> products, I guess, whatever you'd say. Uh, loves a good story. Um, so, of course, he was into the idea and Planeswalker was born. We put out the first single, The Forever Serpent, a little over a year ago as sort of a way to inter- introduce us. And then we just put out uh, what kind of became a debut. It was just going to be an EP, but the material was so long. I was like, at this point, can we really yeah. call it an EP? <laughs> um, so it sort of became the debut album. Um, you know, and the way that happened, not to trail off because... I can kind of go here and there as well when I'm talking. And next thing you know, I'm on a completely different subject. But uh, the song Shadow of Amiria was originally not going to be included. But, you know, our big song on the album is Oath of the Gatewatch, which Mm -hmm. takes inspiration from the storyline of the same name, which features four sort of, you know, main planeswalkers of the story. Um you know, Chandra, Jace, um, Nyssa, and Gideon. And later on down the line, a very famous planeswalker, Liliana, joins the Gatewatch. Um, but she's not part of them yet in this story, which is why she wasn't included in the song. But so many people during the Kickstarter asked, like, where's Liliana? Where's Liliana? And I was like, you know what, Sozos? We're doing so good with the Kickstarter. Let's give them Liliana. So then we added a new song, Shadow of Amiria which is the part of the story that takes place after Oath of the Gatewatch, which eventually sees this character, Liliana, joining the Gatewatch. Um, and so that song ended up being eight minutes. And again, at that point, I was like, okay, we can't call this an EP anymore. This is, a, a, this is an album's length of material. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but anyways, see, again, I forgot where I was going with that. But that all that is how... Planeswalker came to be essentially I always knew I'd want to do something with Sozos again I got the cool idea to do a magic themed band um and I asked Sozos if he'd want to be the singer and thankfully he agreed and 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 I would I would imagine that with with the pandemic the past couple of years that it's hard for I mean like you, you talked about even touring like I know there's no way you could have been really touring very much lately right yeah, I haven't toured since 2019. Yeah. Uh, that was the last Prime Tour. We had some stuff lined up for 2020, like everyone else, and sure. we all saw how that went. Uh, it's great seeing tours kind of pick up again. You know, we're still trying to hopefully snag one ourselves, but um, this was kind of, you know, Helium Prime just released our third album, Question Everything. So this was kind of a cool thing to do in between albums for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool to be able to combine the two things I, I do most music and play magic. (laughs) And and it's been cool because it's like, it's been a way for me to sort of intertwine both sort of the, the worlds that I'm involved in and use again, both my passions uh, to bring things together. Like um, I've seen a lot of people jump on some of my streams or some of my, you know, discord or whatever. And they're like, I don't know anything about magic, but I love the album. And now they're interested in learning magic. So we've been like kind of teaching some of these metal fans magic or just meeting (laughs) other metal fans who like magic. So it's been, it's been really fun for me to be able to do both. Um, And you know, what I always love about it. And one thing I love about music too, is just meeting new people, you know, and um, you know, so getting to meet new people who like to play because like, you know, I'm kind of an introvert. And I don't talk a lot. Like, yes, I'm talking a lot now because it's about things that I I know a lot about. But you can't really in every conversation just be like, let me talk about just myself, you know. And, um, you know, I can be very shy. But a game like Magic is a great thing for that because you guys can just get kind of lost in the game and have conversations with while playing, you know. So for me, it's a good icebreaker. So the more people I know who play, the better. And the, are those um, boxes of your cards behind you? Those are. So those are my decks. Yeah, I got yeah. One, one here. You know, so I was doing. Do you, have them, do you have them in sleeves? Is that? Oh yeah, like a plastic oh, yeah. sleeve to protect yeah. them. Got to protect yeah. the cards, man. Yeah, yeah. there you go. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah. So all that back there is decks that I have. Um, this is sort of my stream setup. You know, uh, and because you twit, you, you, you. I thought I heard that you uh, you go on Twitch and you play Magic, right? Yeah, I've been dabbling into it. Like I've, I've. This last week was my first week, t- like streaming on Twitch. 
um i've been doing like some music streams and then like every sunday i want to try to do like magic games or magic content you know again kind of bridging both things i enjoy to do into one um but yeah so that'll be something i'll be doing more of where i uh play some magic games and one thing i actually want to do is kind of get into interviewing um but the idea i had is i want to interview metal artists who also play magic and so okay. All um, right, that's that's a specific niche. I, I, I interview metal artists, but you're the first one that uh, that I know of, anyway. That's really into Magic: The Gathering. <laughs> but here's the thing: before I got into Magic, like you, because you mentioned you don't, you weren't really into it, and you kind of looked into it before this interview, right? Um, because well, no, before, I mean I'm familiar with it. I, I've played okay. it a little bit with a friend, but I'm not. I don't have. The, I, I bought like a starter set. Oh right, and, and and I played I played with my friend who he was showing me how to how to play, and I beat him every single time. Uh -huh. So then he was like, "Okay, I don't want to play anymore." <laughs> and then he moved. Then he moved to yeah. Kazakhstan, and so I just gave the I gave the set away to somebody else. Right. Yeah. Well, what I was what I was getting at is like before I started playing, I never saw it anywhere, and now that I play, it's like everyone I know knows the game. So it's almost mm -hmm. one of those things. Like there's a lot of metalheads out there who play. Um, it's like this it's like this own little world like once you're in once your your eyes are open to it and you, you know like you see it for the first time like oh everybody plays magic yeah um or you know and so i just thought that'd be kind of cool um again another another way just to bridge both things that i like so why why magic uh and not pokemon or digimon or or or, or um even dungeons and dragons you know why specifically magic well dungeon well i never played any, a lot of the stuff growing up like even me when i was younger uh some friends tried to get me into magic and this i think my cat it's a cattail <laughs> I, I wasn't sure if that was a cattail or like an effect you like a, a flag waving because it no. kind of matches the colors of the <laughs> yeah of no top. it's that's okay. damn she jumps up here i just thought you were like messing with effects i was like all right that's cool. actually actually i can i can see part of my green screen is uh I can see you can see part of the back of my room. That's not good. Uh oh. That's, he's that's, really that's the hidden secret stuff back there. There we go. There it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but you know it's weird, like because Pokemon was our generation, and uh, somehow I missed it. Like as a kid, I knew what it was, and my friends had yeah. cards, and but like I never watched the show. And I don't know if it's because like I grew up like out in this country town and. None of my friends were really close, like in my area. So, like after school, I never really got to hang out with anybody except like weekends. But like, I missed the whole Pokemon craze. Like, I knew about it, but I never had anything myself. And so, like now that I'm older, and a lot of people are getting very nostalgic with Pokemon. Like, I feel nothing. But it's again because like I missed it entirely. Sure. Um, and so, all that you know, like I never had friends to play any of this stuff with. And I think why magic is because again, like I used to work at this place, School of Rock, up until like a month ago, mm -hmm. and some friends. I know plenty of people that work there. Yeah, yeah, at, and, at and, different different ones. Yeah, right. And then some of the coworkers were like, "Hey, man, uh, do you play Magic: The Gathering?" I was like, "Well, I tried it as a kid," and then I went to their house and they introduced it to me. And I remember too, because like I played a couple games. I was like, "Ah, this is cool, whatever." Bought some cards, and then for like six months, I I was over it, and then I got back in and now here you are interviewing me about a band called planeswalker so, <laughs> so there you go man so that's why magic you know um dungeons and dragons is on my list to learn same same friends from work play that as well sure. of course they do <laughs> dungeons and dragons has been hard for me because it feels like there's a commitment you yeah. know uh-huh um like with, with, not... with magic is it just the cards right yeah and like a game could be over in 30 minutes to a couple hours but then the game's over yeah. but with D, &D from what the little information i know it sounds like you do these campaigns that can last weeks months yeah and it's like i can't promise you i'll make it every sunday or whatever day of the right. week you want to do it right. whether it's i'm just not feeling like going or i got something to do so it's just been hard for me to want i want to learn but it's been hard for me to dive into it again for that like I don't want to like go and then everyone's pissed at me. Cause it's like, all right guys, that was fun. I'm not going to be here for the next two. And they're like, but we got to finish, you know, I don't know. Um, sounds like a commitment that I'm not ready to commit to yet. 
Well, you mentioned you mentioned you grew up in a in a small town. Where'd you grow up? So I grew up in a place called Railroad Flat. Um, when I was a kid, this is how small it is. Railroad Flat. Wow. Yeah, it's it's in Calaveras County, um, out here in California. When I was a kid, you couldn't find it on a map. Now it's it shows up on like Google Maps and stuff. But okay. again, like when there was like MapQuest or mm. maybe it was on MapQuest. I never checked on MapQuest, but I remember like when I was younger, my uncle had a GP. It was like a GPS CD ROM that you had to open on your computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I remember looking on that because I was curious and Railroad Flat was not on was not on it. Wow. Um, so let's, it, let's, I, I gotta, yeah. you know, I gotta find it on Google earth now. Yeah. So railroad flat, California. Yeah. Um, let's do this. Uh, I'll, I can share this. I can share the screen. Okay, cool. Um, this cause <laughs> I, I'm sure people watching or, oh no, why is it taking, there we go. So let's go for real. Let's see, let's see if we can find my old house. <laughs> road flat. There we go. Census designated place in California. So there we go. Okay, so here we go. Yep. Y- yeah, you're in the mountains there. Yep. There is a there's an airport. But it's... yeah, you can see the the square area here. Uh-huh. But that's it, just trees and an airport. I don't even remember an airport, but <laughs> There's a uh, community Bible church. Yep. Okay. That sounds right. Uh, here we go. Oh, We're going to zoom, zoom in. Wow. There's. <laughs> yeah, dude. There's like one, there's one, one general house. store. Yeah. Um, where? See, I don't even recognize where that is. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, man. So as you can tell, didn't have many friends around to play these, these games with. Yeah. So I could see, I could, I could see how, uh, you know, you had a lot of time to hone your guitar skills. Yeah. That's pretty much all I did back then. Um, so when I was like 11, 12, not, not too far from Sacramento. Oh no, it's not. And that's, that's the funny thing too, is like, speaking of like honing my guitar skills is I remember like, you know, back then I played metal, I played guitar and like everyone around there, thought I was like, Oh my God, Jason's the shit. And I got a rude awakening <laughs> when I was like 17 and moved to Sacramento. Cause again, there was no one around me. No mm-hmm. one played metal, like the power metal. Yeah. So I didn't have anyone to compare myself to. So I was like, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm fucking good. Uh, <laughs> then, you know, I moved to SAC at 17 and uh, I start going to these local shows of kids my age and they're just smoking me. And I'm like, whoo, I need to rethink my uh, guitar playing. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I grew up there. Not a lot of people around. Um, you know, I think my closest friend was a 20 minute drive. So, and then I didn't have, I mean, we had TV, but it was like, you know, we had like channel three and channel 10 or whatever. Um you know, like the basic yeah. stuff and then like a VHS uh-huh. player. So again, like I never, I just somehow I missed Pokemon, Digimon, all that. Like it just, it was never that I wasn't into it. It's like, I just somehow never got the opportunity to get into it, you know? Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of peeking around what you got in the back of your, you know, in your studio there. I see some Godzilla original art. Uh, is that a Xenomorph so, that you got there? Yeah. So these two pieces, yeah. uh, do you know the band Greyhawk? Yeah, up in Seattle. Yeah, so yeah. their guitarist, whose name I'm going to butcher, she's a good friend of mine. Uh, she goes by Queen Diamond on Facebook. She did. I was I was on Facebook, and I was her Facebook friend for a while. I deleted my Facebook. Okay. Um, yeah, but, she drew those. And, um, okay, cool. Yeah, she's awesome. And I just kind of like, I complimented the Godzilla. And she knows I'm a Godzilla fan. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so cool. She's like, do you want it? I was like, um, yes. And that's she really just cool. mailed it to me. Um, and then same with the Xenomorph. So both those are done by her. And I just thought they were too cool to not put in the background. I, uh, you know, again, yeah, like I said, I was Facebook friends with her. And, um, you know, way before the incident that, you know, oh, yeah. kind of got famous for their their bass player was a hero right mm-hmm. 
Um, so, so when that happened, I was like, holy shit. I mean, I'm glad that he saved the day and that she was okay and everybody else was okay. I mean, it sucked that, you know, well, what was his name? What's his name? I can't remember his name. Now. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't know. She's the only one I actually know from the band. Okay. Um, but like, I, I didn't actually even know the band because I knew her before she actually joined the band. Right. And I had like heard of them, but sure. now I kind of am more familiar as she's joined. Um, but yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, there's like, in all honesty, like, you know, yeah, they're like a traditional kind of power metal band themselves. And I dig them. I love their it, artwork. Yeah. The wizard is you. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I think their name comes from like a game as well, like an old game from the seventies or something Probably. like a role playing game. So, you know, just... um, but, but, you know, just when it, when it comes to power metal, specifically in the united states it's not it's not a huge thing it's like it seems like every band wants to be like a deathcore band or right. something you know um so you know when you grew up in you know railroad flat what were some of the bands you were listening to that made you go like this is this is the stuff i want to play so funny enough um back then I mean, obviously, I knew Metallica. I was listening to ACDC, you know. But, you know, dude, I was listening to, like, Linkin Park. I thought that was heavy, you know. Sure. Yeah, I, I mean, like, if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, I knew what was on TV. I knew what was popular. Right. Uh, or, like, on the radio. So, like, to me, Linkin Park was like, oh, my God, these guys are so metal. You know, corn. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I still enjoy some of these bands. Sure, um, sure. But, so, actually, there was this, uh, this guy, Anthony Abel is his name. And at the time, he was, like, 18. And he his family was sort of friends with my family so like we'd always go to their house and i remember like you know here's little old me like 11 or 12 years old and anthony's like playing guitar and i'm like and i'm just getting into guitar and he's playing like testament and stuff like that and so i'm like wow this guy's amazing and he's the one who started me down this sort of path because um you know, I was like, oh, I like Metallica, I like Leakin Park. And he sh he introduced me to Iced Earth, uh, Blind Guardian. Um, I, I know, I know, but <laughs> come on, this was how many years ago? I <laughs> he 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 always wore a Confederate flag bandana though. Not not back then. Not back yeah. then. Back he, in okay. uh, he didn't start doing that till like um the glorious burden days. Okay. Well but, it's, yeah, okay. I fair, trust fair enough. you separate the art from the artist, right? Sort of, but I don't know. My thing, you know, not to get too much into that, but here's my thing. I'm not ashamed to tell people that my influence came from Ice Earth because, again, I was 12. How right. was I to know that? Right. Yeah, absolutely. 15 years later, this was going to happen, right? Right. <laughs> sure. sure. Um, and yeah, so, yeah, and, and I did ask you what you, you know, how you yeah, got yeah. to this point back then. So that's, that's fair. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I know it's a touchy subject now, but again, I can't. <laughs> If you just, if you listen to some of my music, it's very clear. But um, as I said, so like that, because to be honest, Iced Earth was the first band I was shown in the power metal world back when I was 12 that like, I was like, oh my God. But again, American uh, power metal too. Yeah. yeah. As a kid who could have seen what would have come. Right. Right. Um, And so that, but that's on him, you know? Mm. <laughs> And uh, but anyway, so Blind Guardian, uh, Iron Maiden, you know, Ronnie James Dio. So that's kind of where he started me. Um, and then from there, this was back in the Kazam days, right? You remember, did you ever oh, download? Yeah. Music from oh, Kazam? sure, sure, sure. So I would download like Blind Guardian and Iced Earth, and Kazam would give you like recommend bands, like you know, try try downloading this band. So I would just download a bunch and make like um burn cds of random bands mm -hmm. and that's how i discovered all of them that i like hammerfall halloween merciful fate all of this coming from kazam and basically blind guardian recommendations to download uh avante oh and then what i would do too is because again this was back in the day so i would go like on centurymedia.com because both blind guardian and ice earth were on century media yeah so i'd go to century media and i would just look down their band roster to a band i thought looked cool Sure. Um, that's how I discovered Avantasia. It's mm -hmm. how I discovered Dream Evil. Um, who uh, other bands, you know? So I would just like go to labels websites and 
Um, so then that's what kind of started it for me. Um, you know, I'd spend an entire week downloading one music video on 56 K dial up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and being so stoked to watch that video, you know, um, I know I didn't even try downloading videos back then. I would oh, just, yeah. I just remember the Napster days, you know, you, you, you go to download a song and you go to sleep and in the morning it would be there. Uh, oh you yeah. Know? I would do that. <laughs> So I'd get these bands, you know, like have to, yeah. And um, I remember too, back in the day, like if anyone ever saw early photos of like dream evil, I remember like being so turned off by their photo. Cause they all had like the spiked bleach blonde hair. And it was so odd. Cause again, I was this up and coming young metal kid. So I was like, what is this? <laughs> but then I saw like their album cover for dragon slayer. And I was like, well, with an album cover, this cool, it can't be that bad. And then I heard the song, the prophecy and like fell in love instantly. So that was the day I learned. Don't judge a band by how they look, you know? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I learned, uh, don't judge a band by its cover by, um, picking up some Molly hatchet records at a thrift store. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of where it all stemmed from was, uh, that guy, Anthony, uh, he showed, like I said, he showed me like, the four big ones I remember him showing me was Iced Earth, Blind Guardian, uh, Ronnie James Dio, and Iron Maiden. And then it just kind of stemmed from there. Um, and I remember like I was in LA with my aunt and uncle and I went to like a record store and I bought my first Iron Maiden album, which was, well, CD, you know, which was mm -hmm. Peace of Mind. Yeah. And um, that, you know, the trooper, right? You hear the trooper for the first time. It's just like, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> I got to see uh, Dio and Maiden in front row center in Chicago in 2003. Was that with Motorhead? Motorhead opened, yeah. I was there. Not at your show, but I saw that same tour in Sacramento. That was cool. a fantastic, fantastic show. Yeah. It, it was a, and how we got front row center seats was just happenstance. Me, uh, I was in Chicago. I live in Houston, but me and a couple of friends were visiting a friend in Chicago and, uh, we thought there were like $10 lawn seats because it was one of those amphitheaters. Like it was probably the same kind of thing where there's some seats and then there's like a grass area in the back. Right. And so we were going to get some lawn seats and we went up to the box office right when they opened and they, and we asked for the $10 lawn seats and they were like, we don't have any lawn seats for $10. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, well, what do you have? And they like, well, we have four row a center tickets for $60 each. And at the time, that was that was a lot of money, you know. Right. But I was like, we got to do this, guys. We got to do this. And it was, you know, it's funny. Every time I've seen Iron Maiden since then, I've paid more money and I've sat further away each time. <laughs> I paid more and sat further away each time. Right? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, so I was front row for that too, and that's the only time I've been front row for Maiden was that show <laughs> yeah nice yeah same here same here yeah. and dio seeing dio uh, r.i.p ronnie james dio yep uh and yeah i actually i actually missed motorhead i'm not gonna lie Ooh. uh but we uh we got the tickets and then we left to eat and we came back and motorhead had, had already played yeah their set was from what i remember was super short yeah like 45 minutes but i don't know man to me like getting to see that lineup those three legends together was yeah. You know, you don't see many tours like that. Yeah. Um, no, was, no, was not at all. Um, and dude, as much as I love Maiden, there was something magical about Dio on that tour that it was very hard for me to be like, man, who was I more excited for? Mm -hmm. Like, I think arguably I like Iron Maiden more, like as a band. And, yeah. But man, getting to see Dio live, just it's like, man, that's fucking Dio. <laughs> you it's know, Dio, man. It's Dio. Yeah. So, well, now let me ask you this: um, How um, how how strong are your copyright protections on your videos? Um, shit, I don't know. The, well, the, the reason I ask is because one thing I like to do is uh, is have like kind of a show show a video and have like some commentary about what's going on in the video. Oh yeah, I think. Um... With Planeswalker, you're fine. Like we're not on a label or anything like that. Okay. I don't think you're okay. gonna get flagged. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so maybe the you the all be shocked. <laughs> it, I, but but the Helium Prime um, 
life finds a way. You've got 1.4 million views on that thing. That one you might get hit. Yeah, I won't. I, I don't need. I don't need. I think most people who who are, are somewhat familiar with with your band has seen that video already. Yeah, you know. I mean, I was like, oh shit, I actually have seen this video. Right. Yeah, because <laughs> you know th that's all AFM stuff now, so I'm sure they got that stuff on lockdown. Yeah. So I won't. <laughs> I won't show that. But here, I, I can do. Here's a couple things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna okay. show. I can show. I'm gonna show. Cause uh, you know, that one video I want to show is long, so, you uh, know, I, so, oath? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> because there's, there's a lot going on there and a lot I want to talk to you about, but I want to show, um, here is your, here's your band camp page. Oh yeah. Yeah. Dear tales of magic. You can buy the digital album on the band camp. Are you, um, are you, are you making a CD or, or LP? Oh yeah, we got physicals. You do have physicals. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have them up for sale on Bandcamp yet. I think I gotta, I gotta do that. Okay. But we we have like a big cartel website. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Well, what what what's that? I'll I'll find that real quick. God, I don't know. Maybe like bigcartel.com slash planeswalker metal or Here, something. I'll, <laughs> planeswalker. I'll just. Here we go. I found it. Um. Oh yeah, that's much better than your Bandcamp. Let's. Let's share. Let's share your big cartel. That look. That one looks really good. Yeah, that's the one that we have most of the stuff up on. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. you got a you got a zip up hoodie. Yep. Get the shirt. The mana flows once more. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and then, and then the other one. So you don't have. So one has the the mana flows once more, and the other one it has tales of magic at the bottom. Right. So, you, so okay. one's the album art, right? And then the other's like an yeah. alternate art. And then lyrics gotcha. from um, the song, the, uh, the spark. Yeah. Okay. And then here's the physical CD and then the digital download. Yep. You've actually reminded me, I need to fix the link on the digital download. Cause I keep getting emails that it doesn't work. Uh, okay. So every time someone emails me, I send them like a Dropbox link and then I'm like, Oh, I need to fix that. And then I just don't fix it. So let's look at this, this, uh, the shirt. Oh, is that so? What what is this this picture? Is that I mean that's all. What is the ring? The ring over the the. So, floor? again, it's it's all very much tied to magic. Um, so that just came from like an idea I had. This isn't anything really specific to in in like magic. Like it's not a card or anything. But uh, probably the most famous magic card is called a black lotus, mm -hmm. and they use Lotus in a lot of their artwork for a lot of different cards, uh, okay. the, the flower, a Lotus. Yeah. Um, so I wanted a Lotus on there, uh, a black one, obviously. Right. So we use purple to illuminate that. And then, you know, all the colors are, are represent the five colors of mana from the game. Um, and then the ring. So I play the format that's called commander or EDH for uh, elder dragon Highlander. Um, and there's this card called the soul ring which is almost like the mascot of, of, of the commander format, if you will. Like it's probably the most staple card that all like 99% of decks probably run it. Some people don't, but it's almost like a mandatory run the soul ring. Um, so again, I got the black, lo I got the Lotus to represent the, the black Lotus and the symbolism of that the five colors of magic, and then just a ring kind of representing a soul ring. So that was the idea I pitched to the artist, and then that's what he gave us. Well, he gave us a couple examples. So, like, if you look at the uh, the other T-shirt, that was one of the, the examples he gave us. And I liked all of them, really. So I just, like, kept them all, and we ended up using that one for the cover. And then we just used that as an alternate shirt design. Can we see that there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. So just a lot of symbolism to magic, but not actually meaningful in one way or another you know all right yeah and 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 all right i want to show the video but i want to go over who else is in the band so it's you you're, you're on guitar right uh sozos is playing uh he's a vocalist and guitar also right yeah so he did the solos on the songs okay um okay. yeah and then it was funny because like he when he was writing some of the stuff he put some solos in and he's like, oh, we could just have these for now, and then we could get someone else to fill them out. And I was like, bro, these solos are fantastic. Like, 
why hire someone else? Like these are good. So we just kept his solos. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Right on. Um, you have guest guest appearance from Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. Yup. How did uh, how did you guys snag her to get uh, get in on this? I have been friends with Brittany for over a decade now, like okay. years, um, and it's kind of become just a running joke between her and I. Because back in 2012, she did a song with me from my group Dire Apparel, and then actually on the second Helium Prime album, she guest on a song. And then it just kind of became a joke where it's like, all right, any project I do, you got to be on it. <laughs> are they are they based in Sacramento too? No, they're they're in Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver. Oh yeah, or British Columbia, right? Yeah, the, Vancouver. The the, the the West Coast. It's all yeah. Right, it's the, all. the the West Coast above, like uh, you know, I don't know, Southern California, all the the Cascadia area. It's right. all kind of blends into me. <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, so I've just known her a long time, and I just kind of was like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna play an elf?" <laughs> uh, thankfully, she was down. Awesome. Uh, and then you have uh, Kristen Starkey, right? So she doesn't appear on this particular song you're no. talking about. Yeah, but she ended on up, the album. Yeah. yeah, she ended up portraying Liliana on the new song we added. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and not 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 this video, but in another song. Taylor Washington from Paladin played guitar on, right? Yeah, he just does the guitar solo on the our Kiss cover that we do. Okay. Um, you know, full disclosure, I can't do solos to save my life, uh, <laughs> so I always get people better than me to do them. Um, and then you know we decided to do this Kiss cover. I don't remember why Sozo's. Which didn't which do it. which cover did you do? We did a million to one from the lick it up album okay. I'm, a, I'm a big fan of 80s kiss <laughs> gotcha yeah yeah the without the makeup without, without yeah i mean i love all areas of kiss but 80s kiss to me i think is better personally okay yeah. oh, that yeah. that's your opinion bro that is my opinion <laughs> yeah hey, I, I i did get to see uh paladin when they toured with elysian oh, back nice. in, in 2019 um and I have some friends. I, I know Paladin are from Atlanta, yep. and I have some friends that are friends with them. And they were really stoked that they got to go on that tour. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Taylor's another another person I've known for a long time, and he does. So actually, Life Finds a Way, the Helium Prime song, that solos Taylor. Okay. Um, and the entire debut album from Dire Peril, except for two songs, all the solos are Taylor. So I've been working with Taylor for a while as well. Um. You know, that's the trick. Was you know, it, is this through like Facebook groups or something that, well, so Brittany, I don't remember how we became friends. Cause her and I have kind of been friends even before like Facebook stuff took off. Yeah. Um, so to be honest, I don't really remember how our friendship started, um, or how we started talking. Um, but yeah, Taylor, there's this group called us power metal connection. And when I was doing the first helium prime album, at the time of that album, it was just myself and Heather, kind of like how Planeswalker is just me and Sozos. Mm -hmm. So I kind of reached out like, hey, I need some guitar players. If anyone's interested, I need some guys to like lay down some guitar solos on these songs. And he was one of the people that reached out and was like, oh, I'm down, you know. So he actually did three songs on the first Helium Prime album and Life Finds a Way was one of them. And uh, so him and I have, you know, been buddies since and pretty much anytime I need a really really good guitar solo i i hit up taylor <laughs> nice nice yeah. well yeah he's he's definitely cool yeah. uh he's definitely in a good band so oh yeah and uh and you got alex is the drummer for helium prime he's also drumming on this as well yeah i'm kind of at the point where pretty much anytime i need drums i call <laughs> i call alex like yeah it's that's it's that's fair it's like to me uh i don't know if if alex will do it He's the drummer I want. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right yeah. on. If you got, you got your guy, you know, he's good. No, and that's no reason and, to get him and I else. work very well together. And I don't know, just there's chemistry there that I'm like, I, you know, I could work with another drummer, but I, I get what I need from this guy. So I'm, yeah. I'm good. So. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, let's go ahead. Cause I, like I said, I know you, you're, you're short for time. So let's, let's, let's play this video. Okay. And uh, we'll do some little direct. So we'll do some uh, director's commentary 
Okay. Derek I do want to give a, a shout out to my girl Chelsea on bass as yes, well. Yes, I was going to ask you who who that was. Yeah, so she plays bass in my group Dire Apparel. Um and kind of like like Alex, I absolutely love her and she's pretty much that's my bass, you gotcha. know. If I need good bass, I call Chelsea. Gotcha. Okay, that make that makes sense. Yeah. So there there is the Planeswalker YouTube page. I am you see I am subscribed there. Oh yeah. Okay. Thank there you. There you Thank go. You. Uh, what it'd be nice if I got a, a subscriber to out of you guys. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but, hey man, I got I got fucking five YouTube channels with everything I do. I'll give yeah, you one. I found you one. Yeah, I, I found I found this one. I found the Hellion Prime one, and I found your personal one. I guess you probably have one for Dire Peril as well. Yep. And then I have one for Magic content. I'm going to start making, but don't worry about that one. It's, it's okay. not ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's let's wait. Let's pause this because we got to have it muted let's put it about 30 percent audio let's go full screen here and we're gonna see so sozos is walking out I, i'm trying to i'm gonna try to get he's that cyprus without a doubt that's the oh, yeah. mediterranean <laughs> sea there that's his backyard dude no. so let yeah let's try to let's try to see if uh who and who is uh heather michelle is Heather your, Michelle, your original singer, right? Of Helium Prime. She yeah. was also in this band Grave Shadow for a while. Um, and yeah, you know, very close friend of mine. And, you know, we still make music together and stuff like that. So, Alex, Chelsea, you. Yeah. So, where's Alex here? He's at Folsom Lake. Uh, it's a lake by our house. Okay. So and we where's just, Chelsea there? He's also at Folsom Lake. Okay. We just found two different spots. It was very hot that day, so I feel bad for both of them. And um, what about you? I so funny enough, I'm in a public park in LA. Okay. And like we just found this tree that looked cool. And we're like, yeah, this will work. Okay. Right but on. If, but literally, if you just look a little bit to my right, there's a soccer field. <laughs> <laughs> and some swings. That's the magic of filming, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's why I was I, I know you could hear his yeah. I gotta do it. Yeah. yeah, it's epic, man. I mean, I don't want to talk too much over it, but I, was, I mean, did he make this? Him and his grandma made that. Yeah, <laughs> his grandma, and 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 that's that's Brittany from Unleash the Archers. Brittany. Yep. So that's got to be somewhere in BC. Somewhere yeah. Funny enough, Archer. Brittany already had that costume. It was perfect. <laughs> So you yeah. didn't have to talk her into dressing up. You're she's she's like, just I already like, have it. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's Heather, right? Yep. So Heather plays two she's characters. Two parts. Yeah. 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 And she made both of her costumes and she made Rab's costume. Nice. Yeah. And funny enough, this was your costume. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, we're not important. It's about, it's all about the singers, you know? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. This was Heather's first time attempting to like make cosplay, and she did. She did great. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. She did both costumes. She did both hers, and she did Rav's. Okay. So. And where where is she at? Like, it, was, it looks like she's by a tree here, but then later it looks like she's in like Colorado or. Yeah. So all her stuff was done in Carson City, uh, which is in Nevada. Nevada. Okay. Yeah. I've um, never been to the Carson City, Nevada. That, okay. I didn't realize that they had. Uh, well, we'll see it. What, what, why I thought that it could have been Colorado. I totally, yeah, I totally see why you think that. We actually had to climb a very big hill to get to the area you're talking about, and for me, that sucked. <laughs> uh, I don't climb hills, you know. <laughs> but for the art, I'll do it. I love, I love this video for a lot of different reasons. Um, I mean, you've got essentially five vocalists. I mean, you got two, one one singer doing two parts. But I mean, you're you're telling a whole story here, and it's yep. it's kind of like it's kind of like a metal opera, right? Oh yeah. And, and then so that's Voltaire. Who's that? R. A. Voltaire. He sings in a Canadian band uh, called Ravenous. Um, okay. Very good. Very good. I, I I have not heard them before, but I will check them out. He's got a He's very like. Oh yeah. He, he's. 
and she didn't do many vocals like that in Helium Prime, did she? No, but she did in her other group, Grave Shadow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was very with Helium Prime. I was very like clean vocals only, bra. You okay. know. So, gotcha. Um, just you know, it's just a pre- it's just, it's a preference for me. Um, where is he at? He's in a field somewhere. Yeah, I don't actually know where. So I'll get somewhere to the in Canada, probably. Yeah, I'll get to the context of that. So obviously, since all of us are spread out, and especially the singers couldn't be in the same area, right? I was like, what can we do to this video to make make it seem kind of cool? So again going back to themes of magic the gathering each character they're portraying is what's called a planeswalker that's the name of the band the name of the band yeah and um so if you play the game you have color you have mana that's how you cast your spells right and there's five colors of mana white green red black and blue and all these planeswalkers in the game have their respected mana colors um and on the card so you have like lands let me see if i can like show one real quick um so like so like here right here's the part you're talking about so red mana um is represented by mountains okay so we put chandra in mountains right? gotcha yeah red. and then nissa is a forest green so Brittany's i mean look there. at that look at yeah. that I mean, that's – this whole thing is epic, dude. <laughs> and, you know, it, it turned out so good considering how bad it could have gone. And we oh, literally yeah. – we did this with no budget. Like, we we paid the, the videographers, and that's, like, it. Thankfully, yeah. everyone was just so into the idea that they were willing to just do this for us. We Everyone made their own costumes. Um you know, Sozos did the editing for the video. He did a fantastic job. Um, and then, you know, I kind of just directed it. Like, here's what we here's what we need. Here's what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And again, I think putting everyone in, like, their respected, like, mana scenery really helped with this video. Because it's like, instead of like, oh, they're just outside. It's like, if you know, you know. And that makes it better. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but it's it just like, again, it worked out really good for again the literal zero budget we had to make it <laughs> it's amazing i mean you could do so much with so little you know right. you don't have to have a huge giant budget to uh to do and, something awesome you know yep and that's what i love too like i've talked about this many times but you know, getting like i would consider every single person in this video a professional at what they do and it really shows because again yeah. like the 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 challenge of these four singers like i was there for heather's shots because i live close to her so that was fine mm-hmm. and then so basically what we did is we shot heather's first and then we mocked we edited up a mock video of just heather's shots like all right here's what we did so the other singers could kind of emulate it but then of course we're like you know do your thing be you and um but see like little things like that like rav just did with his hand like that's yeah. all you know but it's like <laughs> Like working with these professionals really brought it to life. Like, like Brittany getting in the tree. I didn't. We didn't ask her to do that. But you know, it's it's, it's she's so, a tree elf. Yeah. It's, it's like the little things like that, and like feeds to the drama, and so, or like that. We didn't ask Rav to do that, but it was perfect. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so just working with people who know what they're doing, you get a result like this with hardly any money. And like the shots of him in the field. Like my biggest concern was like. You know, how's an empty field going to be cool? But like little things like that, like that's so good. Yeah, when he's coming um, up out of the field like yeah. that. Yeah, and like he didn't ask for any of that. They just him and the him and the guy just did that stuff, and it was fantastic. He was just lucky a plane didn't go by. <laughs> oh my god! So funny enough, at the end of the video, uh, on how oh, are we going to see it? Because <laughs> we took it out, but in the first cut, it pans away from Heather. And there's a plane in the sky. Oh. <laughs> like, I, I, I told Sozo, like, I was like, okay, we can't have the plane in there. But it was such a cool shot, too. And there was a freaking plane. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of cool, too, like how uh, Rav and, and uh, Sozo's, their skylines are both cloudy. So it feels consistent. 
Yeah. Yeah. Again, was it planned? I think even Heather's is a little cloudy. A little bit, yeah. So that just kind of worked out in our favor. Yeah, man. It, I, I love it. It's really cool. You got it was, the golden hour right there behind Alex. Yep. Funny thing with those drums is I was a little nervous because that was such a great place to do it. But again, right behind us that you can't see is a campsite. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, man, the last thing campers want is someone banging their drums on an 11-minute <laughs> song. Um, but thankfully, like, they were all into it. Like, some of them came down and, like, were sitting down watching us, and they were, like, into it. So that made us cool. feel better. That's cool. Yep. Like, again, I was a little nervous that someone was going to come yell at us because they're trying to enjoy their, you know, outside. Hey. I'm, I'm, this is a, uh, this is a long video, but again, you know, you, you were thinking about making an EP. If you were going to just make an EP, you would only be able to put this and maybe one other song on there. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, we knew this one was going to be long and before we threw shadow of Miria on there, mm -hmm. I still felt like we could justify the EP length. But then we wrote Shadow and it turned out to be almost nine minutes. And we're like, okay. <laughs> you can't call it an EP anymore. You're right. Yeah. You're, well, you're definitely not a punk band with two minute songs. Right. So, or, or a grindcore band with one minute songs. <laughs> yep. And then there's another part coming up here, which, um, again, I feel like hardcore magic fans will. We'll, we'll get and it's a purposeful reference uh, I'll point it out here when it happens and then I'll kind of explain it like she's like right yeah <laughs> <laughs> right here where they all put their hand up yeah so in the game that was unplanned right so that was that was planned that was planned okay but because in the game each of these planeswalkers has a card called like Oath of Jace, Oath okay. of Nista, Oath of Gideon. And on the card, the characters have their hand up taking their oath, right? Oath gotcha. of the Gatewatch. So this is Oath of the Gatewatch, right? Gotcha. Yeah. So I was like, during that part at the end. And so here's the thing, too, is magic cards have what's called flavor text, where it's like a sentence that sort of uh, hints to the lore of the game on the magic card itself. And on the card, each each one of them takes their oath. And like one of them says, uh, you know, Gideon's like, if people can be free, I'll take the oath. Um, you know, and so in that last passage, they're all reciting their flavor text from the card while putting their hand up. Okay, okay. So that was a straight nod like to the cards in the game. So so again, like that was really meant for the true magic people, you know. Um, because if you don't play the game, uh, you know, you probably wouldn't catch that, but Right, which I, I don't. But right, but, but if you look up like Oath of Nissa card, you'll uh -huh. see the card and you'll see the flavor text, and you're like, oh, there it is. You know, very, very cool. Yeah, very cool, man. I love it. It's Thank it, you. it's uh, it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, you know, I, I get a lot of emails, uh, promo emails about different bands, um, and uh. You know, sometimes I'll just ask, "Hey, can I interview this band? Can I interview that band?" So when it, when I said I wanted to interview you guys, um, I just I don't think I've had many like straight up power metal bands on the show for one, right? And and for two, um, you know, you guys you guys have like a a niche attached to what you're doing. So I thought that that was interesting. And then also, uh, you know, Sozos was announced to be the new singer for glory hammer. Yeah. That's wild to all of us. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> like, and, even and so, us. so, so yeah, I looked at, so I, you know, I, I said, I, I went on a deep dive and I know it's getting close to, uh, to end. Uh, but I did find his, um, his YouTube and I could see he's been doing vocal covers for like 12 years or oh, so. Yeah. So yep. he's, he's just been posting videos and, and, you know, he's, he's obviously gotten better over the time, you know, right. And uh, he just does covers. He does a lot of power metal covers. A lot and, of Sonata uh, Arctica covers. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guy, we actually did one together too, but um, yeah. I did see uh, that as well. Yeah. And if you listen to the music, you can definitely hear the Sonata influence in his writing as well. 
Um, I did. I, I did get to see Glory Hammer, and I got to see uh, Christopher Bull, Christopher Bowles, and his uh, plate of beans at at Vok in 2019. That's funny. I didn't yeah. realize that thing actually played shows. Yeah. 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 Nice. Yeah. There was a. Well, yeah, they played, but the okay. tuba guy and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I know I. You know, I bought tickets for for Vodka in 2020. That didn't happen. It got pushed back to 2021. That didn't happen. So I'm planning on going again this year. And I know Glory Hammer is going to be playing. Yep. Uh, so uh, it'll be awesome to be able to see Glory Hammer again with the new and improved uh, singer. <laughs> Careful. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Well, um, well, you know, what's the other guy going to do? He's Swiss. Right. He's neutral, right? Um. <laughs> Now it's funny, like you know, I've I've said to people, like, uh, you know, you're you're gonna like Sozos knew what he was walking into. Yeah, he's not dumb. Um, but my thing is like Sozos just got an opportunity we all dream of. You know, yeah. I really doubt these internet trolls are have gonna people, are gonna have, make him lose sleep at night. You know, have, have people been trolling him? Uh, there's dude, there's there's always they haven't like not him directly, but if you look at like Glory Hammer posts, there's always the you know, I don't even know what the other guy's name is. Um, it was Thomas. Tom, that's Thomas. Thomas yeah. yeah, you know, Thomas is the only Angus McFly, and um, blah blah blah, whatever. But it's like I don't know. I guess I guess as someone who has gone through three singers and Helium Prime, yeah. I'm numb to things like this. Right. You just kind of yeah. learn. Well, well, yeah. They shouldn't. I mean, they're they're all playing characters. They should give him a new character. Well. I mean, that's my opinion. I mean, I don't run the band, you know, uh, we haven't talked much about that. Um, you know, I don't know what the next move for that is, but you know, I think it's great for Sozos. I'm stoked for him. Um, dude's got the pipes. He's got the skills. Uh, you know, we actually just talked the other day and, um, it's definitely like a, a, again, I can't speak for him, but it definitely feels like a, you know, imagine like exciting and terrifying at the same time, right? Sure. Going from what we do to now a band that does what glory hammer does overnight, basically, obviously it wasn't overnight, but you know what I mean? Like, um, well, well, it's not like when he was with helium prime, you guys were chopped liver. It was just, but um, still, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. there's definitely a size difference in popularity. Yeah. They're on, they're on napalm <laughs> records and, yeah. uh, you know, they're big, they're, they're a big deal in Europe. Yep. Uh, bigger bigger so than here in the states pa- just power metal in general is a lot bigger in europe oh yeah with if we look talent. at like our 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 charts like none of our top cities are even in america you know for any of my bands uh yeah and i haven't I had a chance to check out dire dire peril it uh is that a power metal band as well yeah um dare i say it's very again i wrote the stuff years ago but it's very iced earth influenced okay Fair enough. No, that's fine. <laughs> I know. I mean, like I said, it, you know, separate the art from the artist. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> right. Well, but. yeah. Anyways, though, um, I enjoy that. You know, it's funny, too, because like every time I jump into Dire Apparel stuff, it's such a workout um, compared to like Prime and Planeswalker. Um, so you got to build those chops back up, you know. Awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, you're, you sound like a busy guy. And, it's uh, fun yeah yeah well i appreciate you taking the time to uh speak with me today and i know we uh you know had to work out the times and everything but we worked, right, we made it we made it work we did i appreciate and, it uh, this was fun though dude. i'd love to come back sometime and maybe we can uh get sozos on too yeah yeah if, you know like i like i, I originally planned it it would have been 10 a.m for you it would have been noon for me and it would have been 8 p.m for him right so uh but you you know you were like glad that you couldn't do it at 10 a.m because you had a, another thing you had to do so yeah so what whatever whatever uh works yeah i would cool, love man. to have have you back and uh have him on the show as well and uh hopefully i would love to be able to uh to meet him when i go to vodka next year yeah without a doubt that'd be great so cool. i'll put in a word for you man yeah, yeah. and if you if you want to come on with uh you know some some of your helium prime uh members and do a helium prime uh only episode where we right, can talk right. about uh jurassic park movies <laughs> then uh <laughs> there we go 
Cool. Because, right. because yeah. I mean, like, I I got to throw that out because you've got the dinosaur on the cover. Your your big singles, life finds a way. Yeah. I say I say that all the time. You know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that worked out for us. Like, uh, the dinosaur thing was an accident, and now it's become like our our mascot. Um, <laughs> when the artist was drawing the art for the first album, I was like throwing all these ideas. I just wanted some classic looking sci fi. And then the last minute, I was like, if you could throw a dinosaur in there, go for it. And I'm thinking like there'd be like a dinosaur in the background or something. And you see the art and it's like front and center. And I was like, oh my God, that's incredible. I'm keeping it. And it is now our mascot. And now it's been on every cover we've done. You there know? you go. So, yeah. There you go. Do you ever have anybody dress up as a, as, a, as a dinosaur and come out on stage? Not yet. But when Dire Apparel played last year at Mad With Power... We do a cover of Godzilla by Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, so we had a dude dressed up like Godzilla come on stage. Oh. My uh, my my fun. my friend Matt Frank is a is a real well known Godzilla artist. So oh, nice. so when I saw the Godzilla art back there, that's I, I could tell that wasn't his. I thought the Xenomorph could have maybe been his, but that's cool that it was uh, Queen Diamond. I think her name is Allison. No, no, it's not Allison. So what is her name? name? Jack, oh. Jacqueline. It's Jacqueline. Oh, is it that easy? It looks so yeah. much harder to say. It, but I think it's spelled a little differently. <laughs> it is. It is. But yeah, yeah. Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Yeah. 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 Do me a favor and send. Since I'm not on Facebook anymore, if you could send Jacqueline a message and say I want to interview Greyhawk, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I'll let her know. <laughs> I want to interview. I want to interview everybody. It, right. it's, it's it's one of those things. It's like I deleted Facebook and uh, and I deleted Instagram. So it's it, I'm still. I got back on Twitter. Uh, but it, not a whole lot of people use Twitter anymore. Hardly. I've tried. Like. I can't get into so, it. So yeah. it's hard. It, it's it's been a little hard to contact some of these bands that I was in contact with. So, so um. Yeah, dude. I'll um. If you don't, yeah. If 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 uh, they're interested, I'll just shoot me your email. Sounds good. Sounds All good. Right, well, I'll let you go, man. I know. Uh, I know you're a busy guy, so I appreciate you coming on. All right. Thank you, man. Talk to you All soon. All right. Bye. All right. Later. All right, everybody. That was, oh, he's gone. And he's gone. Uh, that was Jason from Planeswalker, Hellion Prime, and uh, Dire, Dire Peril. Um, so thank him so much for being on. It's it's a big deal. They're, they're a really cool band. They're doing cool stuff. And I love I love that video for the uh, Oath. What, I'm sorry. Oath of the Gate. That's the wrong. Oath of the Gate Watch with Brittany, uh, Brittany Slays, Heather Michelle, and R.A. Voltaire. I wasn't familiar with R.A. Voltaire before, so he was pretty interesting. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, what's going on? Next Monday, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to come on about two hours earlier. It'll be 5 o'clock Central Time, 3 o'clock in the Pacific Time. I'm going to be talking to my pal Aviv from Consciously Dying. Uh, they're a death metal band. He uh, he's He's from Israel. Uh, but lives in SoCal now, so I'm not I'm not sure if the band is an Israeli band or if they're a SoCal band. We'll find out. Either way, they're a death metal band. Uh, I met him at uh, the Metal Assault Showcase when I was out there a couple weeks ago. So look out for that. Um, I'm going to see Dropkick Murphys with my pal Julio on Wednesday. So I'll have a video about that again. I know Dropkick Murphys isn't metal, but it's March. It's St. Patrick's Day. I mean, Dropkick Murphys, what else do you want, man? Uh, the boys are back. Um, last time I saw them was four years ago when they came through here. So it'll be cool to see them again. So uh, what else? Thursday, uh, I mean, my folks were going to uh, – the rodeo. We're going to the livestock show and rodeo. Uh, we're not going to the rodeo and we're not going to the concert. We're just going to go to the livestock show and the exhibition area, maybe walk around the carnival. My dad's got, you know, he's already reserved his scooter. So he's going to be scooting around uh, like when we went to the state fair of Texas. So we got that going on. Uh, and this weekend is the Hill Country Comic Con in New Braunfels, Texas. Uh, we'll be uh, covering that again. So there's a lot of stuff coming up on the channel. Uh, make sure you hit that notification bell once you subscribe, and you'll know anytime I go live or post a new video. All right, guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, slap a like on this. And remember to drink water, listen to metal, enjoy nature, and have the most epic adventures. <laughs>
Yeah.